The naming of the Adirondack High Peaks has been well documented. Starting with Russell Carson's Peaks and People, we know the origins of most names applied to the prominent mountains. But what about the places named with less fanfare? There are thousands of lower peaks, rivers, lakes, and ponds. The names applied to those places range from the mundane to the whimsical. On the mundane end of the spectrum, shallow muddy ponds are common in the Adirondacks and 39 separate water bodies bear the name Mud Pond. Even so, at least a few of those ponds are not the least bit muddy and Adirondack lore says that they were named by 19th century guides to discourage competition at their favorite fishing spots. Surprisingly, there are only 11 rock ponds. After all, that name could apply to almost any body of water in the Adirondacks with no need for explanation. Thirteen bodies of water bear the name Round Lake or Pond. A few of them are roundish, but the largest of the lot and the centerpiece of the Round Lake wilderness is not even remotely round. You might guess that it was rounder, before the water level was raised by two small dams, but topographic maps from 1910 disproved that. The shape in 1910 was pretty much as it is today, certainly not round. Names that include wolf, bear, moose, deer, beaver, otter, and trout are common. Altogether, there are over 125 of them. And there's even one polywog pond. These are all fine names, but why no black fly ponds? Certainly those early settlers and explorers must have seen a black fly or two. And what about lost ponds? There are nine of those, one of which was immortalized by Henry Abbott, who wrote, Lost pond was a tradition, a myth. It has never been seen by any living person. Two dead men, it was alleged, had visited on several occasions while they were living. Abbott's Lost Pond was purported to be somewhere in the Sewards. And another over in the Sabattis country holds a spot in my family history. In July of 1958, a fire was reported near a remote pond in the northwest corner of Whitney Park. My great uncle, Elmer Morsey, was the state forest ranger stationed at Sabattis, and hoping to mount a quick response, he enlisted my father, who worked at Whitney Park, to fly in and attempt to contain the situation. Herb Helms, flying his float plane out of Long Lake, picked the duo up at the Whitney headquarters on Little Tupper Lake and made a tight landing on the pond. The landing ended with the plane bumping into the shore with a little more momentum than Helms liked. So after unloading, he told Dad and Uncle Elmer there was no way he could come back for them. The men got busy on the fire, but as darkness closed in, so did the first of a series of thunderstorms with heavy rain. Everything was drenched, so the pair beat a path through the wet woods, in the dark, to Trout Pond, and then out to the ranger station at Sabattis. That was a solid day's work. So what about the whimsical names? South of the Blue Ridge, no, not that Blue Ridge, the other one, there's a dish rag pond. I'd love to know the origin of that name. It's a shallow, muddy body of water, but the obvious name was already taken. Down near Indian Lake, there's a big bad luck pond, and that's a great name. But nearby, there's one called Unknown Pond. Come on, that's not even trying. Over in the Farrell Lake wilderness, there's a pond known as the Devil's Wash Dish, and not too far away, a second one called Grizzle Ocean. I'd like to credit the folks who first wandered that area with setting a high bar for names, except that they also applied the names Number 8 Mountain and Number 8 Hill to two similar mountains that are just a couple of miles apart. That's been causing confusion ever since. The use of numbers in place names is a well-established Adirondack tradition. 
the famous Fulton Chain Lakes are numbered 1 through 8, but when you visit 13th Lake, you might wonder about the other 12. Well, they don't exist. 13th Lake was named for the historic township where it is located, Totten and Crossfield Township 13. Finally, one name has long captured my imagination. Given the hunting practices of the 19th century, I'd imagined that some particularly notable slaughter had taken place somewhere up on Gore Mountain. The reality is less colorful. Gore is a term used by surveyors to refer to gaps or overlaps that show up where surveys don't line up. The earliest surveys of the Adirondacks were made by adventurers following compass bearings over mountains and through swamps. That made for plenty of gores, and working out the gory details kept generations of surveyors busy. Well, at least they didn't call it Number 8 Peak. <laughs>